Dear friends, I'm Fiona Howarth, the Associate Priest at St Peter Mancroft, and I welcome you as today we mark Holocaust Memorial Day. Today we hold in our minds and hearts those whose lives and freedom have been taken from them in the Nazi persecution and in subsequent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. And we remember those who, as we gather, are fleeing from persecution. So in a moment of silence, let us acknowledge before God and one another humanity's failure, both in the past and still today, to protect the stranger, the weak and the vulnerable. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from our sins. Amen. I am Rabbi Roderick Young, a member of Norwich Hebrew Congregation and the Norwich Liberal Jewish Community. Baruch Abba, welcome to Norwich Synagogue, Norfolk's only remaining synagogue, which provides a warm home to Norwich's small but vibrant Jewish community. Behind me is the Ark, which houses the Torah scrolls. At its top is written, Eit Chaim He Lamachazikim Ba. The Torah is a tree of life to those who cling fast to it. It reminds us that our faith and our culture sustain us with strong roots and new branches wherever we journey, while buildings, even ones as beautiful as this, may be snatched away in just one day. One day. The theme of this year's Holocaust Memorial Day commemoration. On one day, the 18th of July, 1290, the Jews of Norwich were expelled, not to return for 400 years. On one day in 1942, the original Victorian synagogue of Norwich was obliterated with a direct bomb strike. What is just an unremarkable calendar date to the rest of the world may be the one day on which everything changes for you. From 1939 to 1945, there was one day etched in darkness for each individual who make up the millions of Jews, Roma, gay people, the disabled, the left wing, who were deported and murdered by the Nazis. From 1975 to 1979, there was one day of horror for each of the millions who died in the Cambodian genocide. In 1994, there was one day of the worst nightmare for the hundreds of thousands who died in the Rwandan genocide. From 1992 to 1995, there was one day of ultimate terror for those murdered in the Bosnian genocide. From 2003 until today, there was and is one day of utter cruelty for those caught up in the genocide of Darfur. By the mid-18th century, the Jews had returned to Norwich and have been warmly welcomed as proud citizens of our fine city ever since. We pray that all peoples of the world who have known darkness and horror may one day be welcomed home with love. 
May each person find their own tree. May the vision of the prophet Micah come to pass and let there be an endless series of one days upon which every person shall sit under their grapevine or fig tree with no one to disturb them. My name is René Bornstein. I was, uh, when, the, when the war started, I was five years old. I was in a cozy home, a normal home, you know, nice, pa loving parents. You know, we children, until we had the Earth Roundup, we were uh, very happy. And because it was a little town of 10,000 uh, people. Was we could uh, play everywhere because there was no cars. Only the Lord Mayor, the priest and the doctor had a car. In 1942, whole France was uh, declared a zone occupée. Then it was a lot of roundup, more and more roundup. And uh, very often, Jewish organization came to my parents and said, uh, you should leave, you, you should put your children in security because everybody knew it will be around us, we will be taken. My parents decided with a very heavy heart to send us uh, to, we were supposed to go to Switzerland. It was a Jewish organization called OZE and they, they, gave, they let us go to Switzerland thinking we are going there. And we 32 children went on this lorry and it was very, very hot but we had to be hidden. All the curtains were down. Then we reached this clandestine border in, the mid, uh, in Switzerland. We were already at the border. When the law is stopped, uh, we, uh, one boy, he was 11, and he said, oh, Monsieur les Allemands, they always travel in Citroën. Citroën was maybe at the time like the Rolls Royce now. And it was four officers. And behind this, uh, for this Citroën was a big lorry with German soldiers, as we children could escape. Anyway, then uh, they asked straight away, uh, Marianne, where are you going? She said, well, they are children, are just, they, are they will be sent in a, her, in a summer camp because it was just because of the bombing from Lyon. And uh, they followed her, followed us. And they said, where are you going? She said, we're going in this place, Pas de l'Echelle, where uh, it was a children's home. We arrived there, and the person in charge, she said, when she saw us, she said straight away, they're not those children, because I only expected boys. That was, they called it, the directrice. And later on, we learned, I heard she was a collaboratrice. So we spent a few hours, we were already night, uh, the eldest one was straight away sent into prison de Pax in Anmas, and we spent a few hours, I think, in the early morning, three o'clock or four o'clock, I wouldn't say. We were taken also to Anmas. But first we were interview interrogated. What is your name? Are you Jewish? How old are you? Are you Jewish? In the address of the parents. And we didn't give the address of the parents. We had wrong, false ID, but unfortunately not even finished. Oh, they noticed right away we are Jews. It was really a fact that everybody recognized. And we were sent in this prison, Le Pax. And uh, near our cell, I remember, was a very nice lady. I remember her because only once she had the occasion to give us a few good words. And uh, uh, very soon after, we heard terrible screaming. And this screaming it would follow me, uh, I think, my entire life. I can hear this screaming. And we notice we children that, that until the last uh, uh, breeze, he could breathe. After we were liberated, the Lord Mayor, Monsieur Jean Defoe, he was afraid that the Gestapo might come back. And he sent us to Switzerland. It was a hotel, Carlton, converted in a center of uh, Red Cross. And we were uh, there. We were, I think, until November. Well, my parents didn't know where we were, really. And they find us through the Red Cross, I think. Holocaust Memorial Day Trust 
encourages remembrance in a world scarred by genocide. We promote and support the Holocaust Memorial Day, which is the International Day on the 27th of January, to remember the six million Jews murdered during the Holocaust, the millions of people killed under Nazi persecution, and in subsequent genocides in Cambodia, Burundi, Rwanda, Bosnia, Darfur. 27th of January has been chosen for Holocaust Memorial Day as it marks the anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau, the largest Nazi death camp. We still need Holocaust Memorial Day for two reasons. The first is that according to a recent poll, almost half of those questions said they did not know how many Jews were murdered in the Holocaust. And one in five grossly underestimated the number. They thought that fewer than two million were killed. The second reason is that genocides of people by ethnicity, faith, or sexuality still happen. This might be because of anti-Semitic, Islamophobic, anti so many other faiths, anti-Romani, anti-immigrant, anti-disabled, homophobic, and transphobic feelings that still exist. The Holocaust threatened the fabric of civilization and genocide must be resisted still. Our world feels fragile and vulnerable and we cannot be complacent. Even in the UK, prejudice and the language of hatred must be challenged by us all. Today is for everyone. Each year across the UK, thousands of people come together to learn more about the past and to take action to create a safer future. By doing so, we all learn more and we become more empathetic. Holocaust Memorial Day is an opportunity to reflect on personal responsibility since ultimately it is the many actions of individuals that create Holocaust. As a psychologist, I've always been amazed at the ingenuity that individuals show when they try to dissociate themselves from actions they know are wrong. Leaders dehumanize their victims. Others dilute their contribution, saying they did not make the decision by themselves. Some say they only made a small contribution and that others did worse. Some, like engineers, say their actions were neutral and that the system, the building or the equipment designed was used badly by others. Some say that everyone was doing it. Some say their elders and their betters told them to do it. Whatever the reason, Eventually, people just get used to doing it. And so Holocaust Memorial Day, by learning and becoming more empathetic, we have a chance for everyone to reflect and think about the outcomes of their actions as well as those of others. One day is the theme for this Holocaust Memorial Day in 2022. Holocaust Memorial Day is one day the 27th of January, this one day that we put aside, we come together to learn about the Holocaust, to learn about Nazi persecution, to learn about those genocides in Cambodia, Burundi, Rwanda, Bosnia, Darfur, in the hope that there may be one day in the future with no genocide. When we look ahead to one day with no genocide, we must consider how we can make this happen. We can use this theme to motivate us to speak out when we see injustices, prejudices, and identity-based violence. On Holocaust Memorial Day 2022, this one day, we will all come together in our communities. We will learn from the Holocaust. We will learn from other genocides. We learn from the past. We empathize with others on this day. 
and we take actions for a future which is better. Together today, we bear witness for those who endured genocide, and we honour the survivors and all those whose lives were changed beyond recognition. So, as we go forward, let us do this together. Let us challenge hatred and bigotry wherever it exists. Let us ensure that never again really does mean never again. Sadly, this is a phrase that we, that humanity, are still learning how to implement. And this makes today's Holocaust Memorial Day even more important and relevant than ever before. By coming together today, we are able to stand together. We are able to spot the emergence of wickedness. We can exercise vigilance and, I hope and I pray, to stop such atrocities ever occurring again. I was born in Iraq and raised and, and I mean lived most of my life in, in Baghdad. I knew about my sexuality since a very early age. Personally, I've never had any experience of being persecuted for my sexuality under Saddam's regime. But I have uh, a little bit difficulties with the regime when they try to recruit me to spy on my foreign diplomat partner. I was very young and uh, we felt in love. I alerted him and uh, he just disappeared. They said he, he didn't end his mission suddenly out of the blue for no reason. Explain that and I couldn't explain and I, after, you know, a little bit of roughing up and beating up and torture, I, I said everything. I went through medical treatment and I and then I had to go back on the job again. I was doing things just to keep my family alive because from day one, they made it clear to me, you make a mistake, your parents, your family, and even your cousins will be erased. I was on that service for almost nine years, between 1991 until 2000. Yeah, when I managed to escape. To be an asylum seeker is a very difficult struggle and a very hard journey. I've been advised and asked by my solicitor to look through reports on, on my home country um, uh, to do my uh, asylum statement. I started to look for reports inside Iraq and uh, late 2004 I knew about some of my friends who were burned alive in the streets of Baghdad because of their sexual identity. I gather information, I, uh, I gather uh, testimonies from eyewitnesses, more and more and more incidents, uh, almost the same, and uh, others of incidents of people who were arrested, beaten up, harassed uh, since 2004 until this day. And uh, we start a campaign, we launch a weblog with the help of Outrage and with the help of some of my friends here in London and in, in the UK, we formed a small group and we started to do press releases. Unfortunately, because of the work uh, I am doing right now, uh, I started to get uh, uh, hate messages, uh, threats, and uh, even death threats by email, by phone. Some of these threats came from Iraq, some of them came from within the UK. The threats turned into become more physical when I had people trying to break into my house here in London. I had to move house, I have to move uh, often. I was lucky to have uh, the Metropolitan Police uh, by my side until this day 
and I, I consider myself uh, blessed by God, saved by God on many times. And I, oh, it always now comes to, to my mind when I think about victims that have been killed and gone in Iraq and I always try to capture what they were thinking the last seconds of their life because I've been there. I had people pull the gun on my head and shoot next to me, threaten me, telling me that you're dying, say your last prayer. And I did say my last prayer. I mean, I'll tell you about just last night. I had somebody was standing for 20 minutes, shouting at me, screaming at me, and telling me all the names in the book. I felt very sorry for someone who, who's so angry, so hatred, full of hatred, and uh, I'm just fascinated by how people can be, uh, can have hate within themselves for someone they do not know, and uh, they may never meet again. We're on this planet together, and if we have to live, we have to live together. In 2017, Holocaust Memorial Day Trust spoke to Yusuf Sadovsky, one of the few Roma survivors of Nazi persecution living in the UK. The Roma people are a traditionally nomadic group. They originated from northern India and are now dispersed around the globe, many making their homes across Europe and the Americas. There is great diversity in the Roma community, and the word Roma is often used as a collective term for a variety of groups who describe themselves as Roma, Gypsies, Travellers, Sinti and other titles. The Nazis targeted Europe's Roma population for complete destruction in a genocide known as the Porimus, the Devouring. More than 200,000 Roma people were murdered or died as a result of starvation or disease. Many more were imprisoned, endured forced labour, or were subjected to forced sterilisation and medical experimentation. Józef Sadowski is Polish Roma and now lives in the UK. Nazywam się Józef Sadowski. Urodzony jestem 10 kwiecień 1944. Przebywałem w tym getcie w obozie, która była dzielnica w Warszawie wydzielona. When Yusuf was a baby, his father contacted couriers who were illegally smuggling things in and out of the ghetto. Jak nie te kuriery mieli wykraść tego gieta, to jeszcze ojciec w tym gietcie żył i matka. I oni ich przekopili i dali im na miary, gdzie mniej więcej przebywają, gdzie ich szukać. Yusuf was successfully smuggled out of the ghetto and taken to a Roma community. He lived with them mostly in the forest for the rest of his childhood. He later found out he was the only one in his family to survive. His mother, father and three siblings were all killed by the Nazis. To się dowiedziałem, że tak, ojca wysłali do Sztutchopu pod Gdańskiem do obozu, tam zginął, matka została spalona z reszta z dziećmi, a ja zostałem jakoś dzięki Bogu ocalony przez tych kurierów. The Nazis believed in an ideal of a pure Aryan race of Germans and targeted anyone they believed threatened this ideology. They were heavily influenced by ideas about eugenics and racial purity and use this to justify hatred, persecution and discrimination across Nazi-occupied Europe. Jews, Roma and Sinti, disabled and black people were targeted for these reasons. Other groups were targeted by the Nazis for other reasons. Roma people were forcibly taken to concentration camps, including the infamous Gypsy camp at Auschwitz-Birkenau. Those who escaped this fate were murdered by soldiers in the woods, who shot them and buried them in mass graves. But the persecution of the Roma people didn't end with the war. 
Yusuf and his community still faced persecution. Natomiast takie słowa miłośli włoszy, że do tej pory to słyszę, tak ja bym to miał gdzieś to zakodowane. Pierwsze słowo to był cygojny, szwajny, cygojny. Te dwa słowa. To pamiętam i z tymi słowami ja umrę. The Polish language has only recently adopted the word Roma. Kiedyś to nie nazywali na nas Romowie, tylko mówili Cygani. Cygan. A Cygan to świadczyło to po polsku, że to kłamca, że to oszust, że to złodzi, że to ostatni gatunek człowieka. To był Cygan. Roma people in the UK still face discrimination and prejudice far more than most other communities. That is why it is important to learn about stories like these, learning lessons from the past and remembering the victims. Niektóre państwa to jak słyszą te opowiadania, czy słyszą tą rozmowy, to myślę, że to jakaś bajka, że to nieprawda, a to jednak była prawda. Były takie sytuacje, że jeszcze gorsze, jak moje przeżycie, ale te ludzie już nie żyją. To są jednostki, tak jak ja jestem. Natomiast to, co ja opowiadam, to nie jest bajka. To nie jest nic, tylko to jest ludzkie przeżycie. To, że jakoś przeżyłem, to nie wiem, to chyba jakiś cud był, albo jakiś dar od Boga, że do tej pory ja żyję i mogę teraz dać to sprawozdanie, co się działo. Say this city has 10 million souls. Some are living in mansions, some are living in holes. Yet there's no place for us, my dear. Yet there's no place for us. Once we had a country and we thought it fair. Look in the atlas and you'll find it there. We cannot go there now, my dear. We cannot go there now. In the village churchyard, there grows an old yew. 
Every spring it blossoms anew. Old passports can't do that, my dear. Old passports can't do that. The consul banged the table and said, if you've got no passport, you're officially dead. But we are still alive, my dear, but we are still alive. Went to a committee. They offered me a chair, asked me politely to return next year. But where shall we go today, my dear? But where shall we go today? came to a public meeting. The speaker got up and said, if we let them in, they will steal our daily bread. He was talking of you and me, my dear. He was talking of you and me. Thought I heard the thunder rumbling in the sky. It was Hitler over Europe saying they must die. We were in his mind, my dear. We were in his mind. Saw a poodle in a jacket fastened with a pin. Saw a door opened and a cat let in. But they weren't German Jews, my dear. But they weren't German Jews. Went down the harbour and stood upon the quay. Saw the fish swimming as if they were free. Only ten feet away, my dear. Only ten feet away. Walked through a wood, saw the birds in the trees. They had no politicians and sang at their ease. They weren't the human race, my dear. They weren't the human race. Dreamed I saw a building with a thousand floors, a thousand windows and a thousand doors. Not one of them was ours, my dear. Not one of them was ours. Stood on a great plain in the falling snow. 10,000 soldiers marched to and fro, looking for you and me, my dear, looking for you and me. For our act of remembrance, we are joined by Peter Prinsley of the Norwich Hebrew Congregation and Leonard Howarth of Notre Dame Sixth Form. Candles will be lit in silence for the victims of the Holocaust and of the genocides in Cambodia, Bosnia, Rwanda and Darfur. An additional candle will also be lit for those torn from their homes by conflict and violence today. God of the past, present and future. We remember today the six million Jews murdered in the Holocaust, the millions of other victims of Nazi persecution, and all those who have been targeted and killed in subsequent genocides. We remember those who have survived genocide, sharing their stories with us. We give thanks to you for the lessons of human stories 
both in their suffering and in their joy. We remember those who stood up against injustice and saved lives. We give thanks to you for their example. Today we acknowledge the sacrifice of those that stood together with those who suffered. And we affirm that every life is loved by you and is sacred. We pray never ever again as we stand with all who face oppression, the oppression that continues to stain your world and contradicts your love. We pray that you will inspire us to live holy and good lives and let us commit to remembering and to glorify you in our words and actions. We make these prayers in the name of God, you who journey with us into your eternal hope. Amen. This Hebrew prayer is traditionally chanted for the souls of the dead. El male rachamim, shochein bamaromim, hamat semelucha nachana, tachat hanfe hashchina, bama alot kudoshima tahorim, kazoha harakia mazirim, et nishmot achainu. Asher nish pach damam kamaim, vashe avdu mipne hamat hametzik, beat so tachat memshelet germania, anaba al harachamim, has tirain beseta kanfecha le olamim. Utsror betro hachayim et nishmatam, Adonai hu nachalatam, Vayanucho vasholom an meshkavaham, Venomar amen. Exalted, compassionate God, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure who shine brightly in the firmament, to our sisters and brothers whose blood was spilt and who perished at the hands of the Nazi oppressors in the countries that they tormented. Merciful One, we ask that you shelter them forevermore under the cover of your wings. May their souls be bound up in the bond of life, God is their inheritance. May they rest in peace. Amen. Kaddish means sanctification, and the mourner's Kaddish is a prayer that an individual says for a loved one that has died. The mourner's Kaddish nowhere mentions death, but rather it praises God and looks forward to the time when God's kingdom will embrace all humanity. Yitkadal vi yitkadash me rabba, be alma divra kerute ve yamlich malchute, be chayachon of yomechon, u chaye de chol beit Israel, bagalav is man kari ve emru amen. Yehesh me rabba mavarak le olamulame o maya. Yet barak for yet tabak, for yet paavi et roman, viet nase, viet adavi et alevi et alal, shmeda kudesha, brechu. La ela min kol bechata ve shirata, tush bechata ve nechamata, de amiran be alma, be imru, amen. Yehesh lama rabba min shamaya, ve chaim alenu ve al kol Israel, be imru, amen. O se shalom bim romav, who ya ase shalom, and lay nu veal kol Israel, veal kol yosh vete vel, ve emru. 
Amen. We believe the Holocaust must have a permanent place in our nation's collective memory. We honour the survivors still with us and reaffirm our shared goals of mutual understanding and justice. We must make sure that future generations understand the cause of the Holocaust and reflect upon its consequences. We vow to remember the victims of Nazi persecution and all genocides. We value the sacrifices of those who have risked their lives to protect or rescue victims as a touchstone of the human capacity for the good in the face of evil. We recognise that humanity is still scarred by the belief that race, religion, disability or sexuality make some people's lives worth less than others. Genocide, anti-Semitism, racism, xenophobia and discrimination still continue. We need to share responsibility to fight these evils. We pledge to strengthen our efforts to promote education and research about the Holocaust and other genocides. We will do our utmost to make sure that the lessons of such events are fully learned. We will continue to encourage Holocaust remembrance by holding an annual UK Holocaust Memorial Day. We condemn the evils of prejudice, discrimination and race. We value a free, respectful and democratic society. The Reverend Fiona Howarth and I will leave you with a final benediction, the oldest Hebrew blessing in existence from the Book of Numbers. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmarecha Ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'chunecha Yisa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour all people. Love and serve God. May God bless you and keep you. May God's presence shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God's presence be with you and give you peace. Amen.